So just on my own body, um, I feel like my lower back needs a little bit of stability work and a little bit of attention, you know, and I think it's also, you know, me moving heavy pieces of equipment over the last week, you know, as we move into the studio. So I'm just feeling today that I need for myself to bring a little bit of stability work in. So I've got the foam yoga block. And I'm going to be using that as a little prop. So when I squeeze my knees onto it, it's going to do the work that I need. If you guys have a block, you can grab it. If you've got one of those um, soft over, over balls, you can use that. Or just grab like a pillow or a cushion off your couch or a folded up towel. Just something that you can use maybe between the knees so that we can do a little bit of stabilizing work. So if you just have that on hand for yourself, that'll be perfect. And then as always, I'm just going to mute background conversation. You guys can unmute yourself at any point if you've got questions. And then we're going to start today in a seated position towards the front of our mat. So let me just make sure you guys can see me in camera. That looks good. All right. So. You're going to have your knees bent and I want you to take your feet a little bit wider than you normally would because I don't want you to feel any kind of pinching in the front of the hips. If you are feeling pinching, then maybe move your bum back or sit on a cushion or even just take your knees and feet a little bit wider like this. And then I just want you to rest your forearms in front of you, hands and elbows on your knees. Just let your back softly curve over. Don't force it into any position. And then rest your forehead on your arms. If you want to put a pillow underneath your head as well, if that feels better for your neck, then you can do so. And just make any final adjustments you need to this starting position, because we're going to stay here for a few minutes and just allow ourselves to connect into our breath and to take a moment to slow down and notice how we're feeling this morning. Feel free to close your eyes if you're comfortable to do so. And then bring your awareness to your inhale and your exhale. And start lengthening and extending each breath. Just letting yourself slow down. And in slowing down, give yourself an opportunity to notice the shape that your body is taking at the moment. Notice the points of contact of your body to the earth. And just allow yourself to give your body weight to the floor, to the ground underneath you. And maybe notice if there are any areas of tension or unease as we start this morning. And you don't have to chase them away. If it feels painful, then maybe you need to adjust your position slightly. But just use this as a reference point for starting our session this morning. Just bring your awareness to the back of your body. And 60% of our lungs sit towards the back of our ribs. So this is a wonderful position, a wonderful shape of the spine to be able to connect into our breath a little bit more consciously. Notice each inhale and each exhale as it moves through your body. And notice how the simple act of breathing can already start to shift areas of tension. It can start to shift 
how you're feeling. And if you could describe your physical body in one word, what would it be? So we're going to take just one more deep breath in through the nose and then pause at the top, hold that energy, hold that oxygen in your body just for a moment. And now open your mouth and slowly sigh it out. Taking time as you start to blink your eyes open, unravel your spine, coming all the way up to sit up nice and tall. And you're going to keep your legs a little bit wide like they are at the moment. Move your hands to the backs of your thighs, sitting up nice and tall, lengthening up through the spine. And on your breath out, start to curl back. And you don't have to go very far. Just decide where that starting position is, that starting point. Take a little breath and then curl forward. Help yourself with your arms and sit up nice and tall. And again, curl your tail under. So it's that lovely feeling of scooping your belly away from your thighs. And then again, curl forward and then lengthen and it's a lifting through the crown of your head. One more time, curling back, draw your tail under. Pause for a moment, take a breath in. And then exhale, roll up and sit up nice and tall. Now, take your arms away, breathing in. Exhale, curl your tail under. You might be able to go a little bit further. Maybe you just want to go to the same space. Take a breath in and exhale forward you come and lift up tall. Draw your tail under, feeling that rounding of your spine, the rounding of your back. Breathe into hold and again, curl forward, lift up straight, just one more time, draw your tail under. Pause here for a moment. Place your hands back behind your thighs and then ease yourself down onto your back. Just let your hands settle beside you. Walk your feet a little bit closer in towards your pelvis. I want you to have your knees and feet just slightly separated here. Rest your hands onto your lower abs and then just close your eyes for a moment or just soften your gaze. And once again, notice the points of contact of your body to the earth. Feeling your feet, the back of your pelvis, the back of your ribs, your head, your elbows, and perhaps the backs of your arms. Blink your eyes open and start to tilt your pelvis. Very small movement. We're not coming all the way up. It's a rocking action that we're creating here. But what I want you to do is use your feet to create this movement. You can actually let your abdominal stay almost soft. So as you tilt your pubic bone to your nose, you're pushing your feet into the ground. And then when you rock your pelvis back, you're just doing a gentle pulling action with the feet. And just notice how this feels on the back of your pelvis and your sacrum. Maybe there's a little bit of self-adjustment that's happening around that sacroiliac joint. And then notice how the movement of your pelvis creates this wave that travels up your spine. So you might even notice that your head is rocking onto the floor. You don't have to force it. Just notice if there's that ripple happening for you. 
And we're going to take just one more time. Settle your pelvis back to the center and hold it here. So we're trying to get as neutral as possible with a little hollow under the back, but here's the reality. If your back is grabbing or spasming, or if this doesn't feel good, then you need to tilt your pelvis a little bit. Find a position that actually works for you. Now, stabilize. Can you pick up the right leg? So you're keeping a 90 degree angle at the knee. So you're moving from the hip joint and then placing that foot back down. Picking up the left leg. And again, the movement comes from the hip flexor. The knee stays the same angle. And then placing the foot back down. Keep alternating sides. And this is quite a simple action. It's a simple exercise. But it's quite surprising how many of us struggle with it because this action of disassociating at the hip actually requires a lot of core control. So there shouldn't be any movement through the lumbar spine and pelvis. Make sure that you're breathing. Each inhale, each exhale guides your movement. Whatever breath pattern feels right for you. And we're just going to do a few more. How does your right side feel in comparison to your left side? And then come back to the center and hold it here. Take both your hands, reach them up and hold it with the palms facing each other. Start to scissor the arms. So one arm reaches back as one arm comes forward and then we alternate over to the other side. So first bring your awareness to your hands moving through space. You can almost visualize that you're tracing the shape of a rainbow through the air. And then bring your awareness to your shoulder joint itself. And it's that lovely ball and socket joint. So there's a rolling action inside the shoulder joint. And then bring your awareness to your scapula, your shoulder blade that is sitting underneath you. So it's connecting to the mat and it's connecting or gliding on the back of your ribs. And can you allow that gliding action as you move your hands through space? Find the weight of your head, the softness of your neck. Last one, you're going to reach your left arm backwards overhead. Open your left knee out to the side and then roll onto your left side Stacking your knees, folding your arm underneath your head. So you're going to have come off your mat a little bit, which is fine. Connect the bottom oblique. And all we're going to do is move into a little bit of a clam exercise. So we're opening and closing the top knee. It doesn't have to be a massive movement. If you're one of those people like ballerinas have that incredible turn up, then you might be able to bring your knee right up here. I don't have that range. So sometimes it feels like I want to cheat a little bit. I want to open the knee and then roll my hip back to feel like I'm opening the knee higher. So you don't have to go too big. Rather focus on the stability here, pelvis and lumbar spine. And waking up into those bum cheeks. Taking two more. Use your hand to help you monitor. One more time. And release. Now stay where you are. Take your top leg, stretch your leg out long, and then I want you to flex your ankle. 
So you have that feeling of energy reaching out through the heel of your foot. Tighten the underneath oblique and just do a little movement of your leg forward. So you're closing the hip and then do a little movement of your leg backwards, but try not to arch the lumbar spine. So now you're opening the hip. Tiny movement forward, tiny movement backwards. And the reason we're doing this is to help us find our middle position where the hip joint is neutral. So now bring your leg just in line with your hip, your shoulder, your ear. The hip is open, the gluteals are working. Now lift your leg up slightly, tighten the bottom oblique, and then lower the foot down without dropping it. And again, lifting up and releasing it down. So we're going to do six more. We're gonna see if we can fire up that side bum muscle here. This is the gluteus medius. So I was saying at the beginning of class that I feel like I need to focus a little bit on stability and around the pelvis. This is a really important pelvic stabilizer muscle. It basically holds us together, one on the right and one on the left. And we're just going to take two more, controlling your movement, we're going to do just one more time. Lift your leg up and we're just gonna see if we can hold it there for three breaths in and out. So this is a little bit of an isometric exercise. So holding it, connecting to the muscle, breathing, stabilizing, point your toe, bend your knee and release it all the way in. Move your hand, your top hand, onto the floor just in front of you. And we're just going to step the foot back. We're going to roll onto our backs. Come all the way onto the mat and both hands reach all the way up again. From here, let's start to scissor the arms. And again, just giving ourselves that little reminder of hands traveling through space, shoulder joint rolling, scapula gliding. Let's take two more, one more, hold it here and I'm gonna have my back to you for this next one. Opening, right knee to the side, roll onto your right side and then cradle your head and set yourself up, ready for the clam. Opening the top knee and releasing it down. So just moving with control, finding that stability through the lumbar spine, pelvis, underneath oblique is connecting. Make sure that you're not collapsing your head. You still want energy through the crown. And notice on your own body how this left side feels in comparison to the right side. So my left side definitely feels weaker than my right. I've got to really mentally focus on this side. Last one for the clam, and then releasing and holding it here. Now, take that leg, Stretch it all the way out, flex your foot, and just double check that positioning for yourself. Bring your leg a little bit forward and a little bit backwards. Tiny, tiny movements. So you're giving yourself an opportunity to notice the opening and the closing of your hip joints. And again, it's a little bit of a disassociation of the leg. So your pelvis and lumbar spine stay stable. And now say to yourself and hold. We lift up and release down. Taking seven more and release. 
focusing on gluteus medius. And notice on your own body again, if your leg is trying to sneak forward, it's pretty much telling you that maybe your quadricep or your hip flexor is trying to dominate. Or if your leg is moving backwards, maybe you're arching into your lumbar spine, maybe your lower back is trying to take over. Keep that alignment, stay with your breath. Taking just a few more. On this last one, lift your leg up and hold it here. Stay here just for a moment. Keep breathing, isometric work, firing up into that bum cheek on the left. And now point toes, bend your knees and releasing it down. Place your left hand to the ground, stepping your foot back, let your pelvis roll so you're not straining. Roll onto your back so you're lying supine again, knees bent and arms all the way up. Bring your hands together so the palms of your hands are touching in a prayer position. And we start to slide, right hand up towards the sky, release it down and slide the left hand up. So keeping your wrists and elbows nice and straight, so the movement actually has to come from your spine. So as your spine rotates, your ribs are going to move on the floor, your shoulders are going to lift up and then release down. And there's a wonderful feeling of almost pouring your weight towards the one lung and then rolling the weight over to the other lung. Taking one more, come back to the center, hold it separate your hands and then bring your hands beside you. So you can have palms down or you can have palms up. Just see what works for you. And we're going to go into a pelvic press, not a pelvic curl today. So take a moment to set yourself up, take a breath in and then press your pelvis up. You're still coming into that same bridge position that we normally do but we did not articulate the spine. Stay for a moment and then hinge the pelvis down. So again, I'm not rolling, I'm moving my spine in one unit. And again, pressing into your feet and arms, lifting the pelvis up, pause for a moment, and then hinging down with control connecting into your breath as you do this. So again, it doesn't matter when you inhale or when you exhale, you just want to find the thread of your breath. We're going to take two more. See if you can fire up those bum cheeks, gluteus maximus working underneath you. And hinge down. Last one, press up. And then hinge all the way back down. Stay here just for a moment. Move your hands onto the front of your pelvis again. Bring your right knee up to tabletop. Flex your ankle. And then on your breath, start to stretch your leg on about a 45 degree angle. See if you can straighten your leg, maybe, maybe not. Make sure your lower back feels okay. And then bend your knee back in. And again, stretch your leg away. So notice how when you extend your leg that it loads the abdominals even more. So it's that lengthening of the lever away from your midline gives you a challenge. Figure out the point where you need to stop. We're going to do two more. And we're going to do one more time. 
bend your knee in and hold it here. Now make your knee turn outwards and cross your ankle over. On your breath out, connect your core and can you lift the underneath leg? So you're coming up into a little bit of a gluteal stretch and then releasing the foot down. And again, you have to have core control here. If you feel at any point that your lower back doesn't like this, then it might help if you tilt your pelvis a little bit so you get an imprint. Or for some people, it helps if you come up into a chest lift like this because then the abdominals are already switched on. Let's take two more. And we're going to take just one more. And release down, stay there. Slide your thigh all the way over. Bring your hands to a low V position, palms down. Start to roll your knees over to the left. Turn and look to the right. Don't force it. How far does your rotation want to go this morning? And then breathe out and work the obliques to pull yourself back to the center, wring that water out of the sponge. Same side. Your knees go to the left, chest is open, look to the right. Exhale, narrow the waist and draw to center. Take two more. Rolling knees over to the side. Exhale. Last one. And hold it here. Just bring that right knee in towards your chest. Tuck your chin in. Curl yourself into a tight little ball shape. And then come all the way back down just for a moment. Flex your ankle, moving your hands just behind your thigh. And on your breath, Stretch that leg as straight as you can towards the ceiling, hamstring release, and then bend the knee, come back in. We're going to do three more. And release. Take two more. Head and shoulders easy, pelvis on the ground. One more time. Stretch up. And now just allow your knee to slightly soften and keep pulling your toes towards your nose. Slide your hands a little bit down your thigh. Use your hands to start rotating the thigh bone in and out. So you're going to see that your foot is doing almost this rotating movement like you're cleaning the ceiling above you. And you want to feel that you're getting internal, external rotation at the hip joint. So we're doing a little bit of a hamstring glide here. We just happen to be lying on our backs today. So the three muscles that make up the hamstrings at the back of the thigh, we want them to slip and slide easily over each other. Just bring your leg back to center, Hug your knee in one more time and then placing your foot all the way to the ground. Place your hands to your pelvis again. Take a moment to connect center, bringing your left leg up to tabletop, flexing your foot and now stretch that leg away about 45 degree angle. Can you straighten it? Maybe, maybe not. And then bend the knee and pull back to the center. And again, extend away. And come back to center. Feel the loading into the abdominals as you move and let your breathing assist you with that core stability and strength. Last one. And in you come, hold it, turn your knee out, 
Cross your ankle over the right leg and hold it there. Deepen the ab connection. Lift your bottom leg up. And release. And again, lift. Release. Last two. Such a lovely stretch for the gluteals, the back of the hip. Last one. And release. Stay there. Slide your thigh all the way over. Hands go into a wide V. Roll your knees to the right. Look to the left. Just observe yourself. No forcing. How far do you want to go on the side? And then exhale, abdominals draw you back to the center. Taking a few more. Last one. Hold it here. Bring your knee in towards you. Tuck your chin. Curl yourself into that rounded ball shape. And then just let head and shoulders go back down. Hands go behind the thigh. Flex your ankle. And then breathe out as you stretch. Find a little bit of a hamstring release. And then bend your knee in. So we're just going to do a few more just to start warming up, to loosen up the back of the leg. Find that placement of your pelvis, head and shoulders on the floor. Extend up, now hold it here. Soften the knee, keep the toes curled back, hands come down a little bit, and then we start guiding ourselves into that internal, external hip rotation. So, the trick is to also, as you do this movement of the leg, to keep your pelvis pretty stable. So you're not twisting or laterally flexing the spine at all. Gliding those three hamstrings muscles over each other. And last one. Come back to the center, bend your knee in, and you can place your foot all the way to the ground. So remember I said we're going to use that little prop between the knees. So just take the prop that you've got and put it between your knees. You want to place your hands just onto your pelvis again. Find a place where your lower back feels good. And then I'm gonna ask you to stabilize there. So there's no tucking or arching or moving from this point. On your breath, start squeezing your knees onto the prop. That's going to start engaging the inner thighs and then let that tension release. Don't let your prop drop out though. And again, breathing. Squeeze and release. So it's quite a slow controlled movement. Squeeze and release. We're going to take two more. And sometimes if my sacroiliac joint is out of alignment, I'll do the squeeze and all of a sudden I can feel something almost pop back into place. So that's not a bad thing, but you want to make sure that nothing is feeling painful as you do this. And release. Now keep the prop there without squeezing like crazy and put your hands beside you, palms down or palms up. Now we're going to roll up into a bridge position. Pelvic curl, tilting, rolling up sequentially through the spine. And when you come up, 
Are you still holding on to that prop or has it dropped out? So you've got to use your inner thighs here. Relax your neck and then ripple down through the spine again. Imprint and release. And we're going to do three more, rolling up. And if you notice on your own body as you do this, by the way, that your knees are sore, it's very possible that the side of your leg is tight, either the quadriceps muscles or maybe that IT band, in which case you probably need to walk your feet wider and give yourself a bigger prop. So just make that adjustment if you need. Getting that lovely squeeze into the bum cheeks. And then roll down. I'm going to do just one more time. And one of the lovely things about using the prop here is that it switches on the inner thighs, which instinctively connects that deep midline of the body. Now hold it here. No strain in the back. Keep the right arm down and bring the left hand up towards the sky. Turn the palm of your hand across. Open your arm to the side, breathing in. Don't rest, just hover. Exhale and lift your arm back up. Two more, breathing in. Challenging those sling patterns of the body. Keeping the prop between your knees, inner thighs are awake, bum cheeks are working. Abdominals are stabilizing, hold it, and then bring your hand all the way back down beside you. Let's try the other side. So now the right hand comes up, turn your palm across, and here we go. Inhale. Exhale. Two more. One more. Hold it, bringing your hand all the way down and now slowly, slowly melt down through the spine, feeling the imprint into the lower back and release. You can take the prop out, place it just beside you in reach and just let your knees open out to the side. Soles of the feet touching, so you give yourself that little bit of inner thigh release. Take your hands, placing them onto your ribs, and we're just gonna stay here for five full inhales and exhales. So, breathing in through your nose, feeling your ribs widen. Breathing out through your mouth, draw the ribs closed, really activate those upper abdominals, all those muscles around the ribs. And again, wide inhale inflating and filling your lungs. Long exhale. See if you can squeeze every drop of air out of your lungs. And again, breathing in. A little bit of a squeeze, a little hug of the heart. Long, slow exhale. Giving your heart some space. Last two, breathing wide. Notice all that energy, all that oxygen moving through your body. Long exhale, allowing your body to soften, release. And this is going to be the last one, breathing in. Noticing that movement into the back of your neck and into your lower back as you inhale. And then as you exhale, again, noticing that gentle release of the lower back, the softening at the back of your neck. And then bring your hands down underneath your knees and bringing those knees all the way up. Bring your knees in towards your chest for a moment. And it's a soft rocking from side to side. and then center yourself here. Slip your hands behind your thighs. We're going to do a slow roll up. Moving your legs away from you, straightening your elbows, curling head and shoulders forward, 
pouring your body weight down towards your feet as you gently roll up. So there's very little momentum. And then letting your head rest to your knees. And then reverse it. Start rolling backwards. Let your elbows straighten. And then once you have a connection of thighs into hands, lighten the load on your feet and pour your body weight all the way back. Head down and let your knees come towards you. And we go again, bringing your thighs away, curling head and shoulders. And again, we breathe. Forehead to knee. Roll back. So this is a mix of rolling like a ball and the roll up. So it's a nice modification for either one of those. Curling forward. Last one. All the way down. And then roll up into a sitting position and lifting nice and tall. So come into a mermaid seat. So I'm gonna do a mirror image for you. So I just want your right shin to the front, left shin to the side, and just take a moment to get your pelvis as level as possible. So if you're tightening your hips and you're leaning to the side, then don't force it back. That's where we start to injure knees and injure hips slightly. Rest your hands, palms down on your knees, and you can either soften your gaze and look down, or you can close your eyes completely. And we are just staying here with a gentle breath. It's not a forced deep breath in or out. And giving ourselves a few moments to naturally settle into the shape that our bodies want to take. So I can notice if I just give myself a few seconds here that my right bum cheek, sorry, my, well, I'm doing mirror image. So left bum cheek, mirror image for you, actually starts to settle back. <laughs> actually starts to settle back. And it feels much softer in my hip joints now. And then once you've settled a little bit more, start to open your eyes, blink a few times, and now let's go into our seaweed that we often do. And it might feel quite different now that you've perhaps adjusted your seated shape. finding that lateral flexion of the spine. So you're opening up through the side body. And then we're just going to take two more and finish with your right hand to the ground as you stretch over and then come all the way up and hold it here. Turn the palm of your hand up, look up, start reaching back to open up the front of your chest and then rounding your spine as you come all the way down. And again, breathing in and breathing out. So again, what I want you to allow yourself here, give yourself permission to let your body respond to what your upper body is doing. So if your pelvis needs to lift or your knees need to move, then allow it. One more time, breathing in. Come all the way down. See if you can stay here. Place your hands flat to the ground and then just let your shoulders center. Now again, I'm going to ask you to soften your gaze or close your eyes. And we're just going to breathe here for a moment. Nothing forced. 
But with your inhale, there's a natural internal expansion and release. And with your exhale, there's a natural softening or an ability to perhaps move a little bit deeper. And again, it's not a forced action. Injuries happen when we force movements, especially in a twist. And then blink your eyes open. And now we start to move into extension of the spine, lifting heart, lifting eye line. And then we round our spines and we go a little bit deeper back. And again, arching the spine. Now remember right at the beginning of class when we were lying on our backs and we were doing some pelvic tilts and we used our feet to create the movement. I want you to see if you can let your hands create the movement here. So when I arch my spine, I'm actually doing a little pull with my hands. And then when I push with my hands, there's a natural rounding of the back to curl back. And it might make your movement smaller and that's absolutely perfect. Let it be smaller there. Last one. Come just to the center, hold it. Move your right hand to the middle of the mat. Pick up your left hand, take a little peek underneath. And then we come all the way back up. Now bring your feet around. I want you to put your feet on the ground. You're going to round your spine over and just take a moment to feel the right and the left sides of your body. Noticing your lower back, the space between the shoulder blades on the back of your ribs, your neck and shoulders maybe. Unravel, sitting up nice and tall. Now let's do the other side. So again, coming into a mermaid seat and you guys are going to have your left shin in front now. You're going to have palms facing down on your knees. And then again, soften your gaze or I invite you to close your eyes completely. Making any adjustments that you need to. And then just coming into a natural breath. And notice where your body naturally settles. Your body will adjust itself if you give it the opportunity to find its way. If you need to prop yourself sitting on a cushion or placing something underneath your knees, then that's fine as well. Give yourself time to observe what's happening for you on the side. Blinking your eyes open and we come into our scene. So again, for me, I could definitely feel that my sit bone, my left sit bone on the side, because I'm sitting opposite to you, made more contact with the ground when I gave it an opportunity. Because sometimes if I rush into the position, because my hips are tight, then I end up straining into that knee because I think, okay, let's get that pelvis down. So just taking those few moments to settle makes a huge difference. Let's do two more. One more, up and over, hold it, and then straightening that arm. So now you've got your left hand to the ground. Turn your palm up, look up, and then open up the chest, and then curling over. And again, 
reaching back, breathe in, and go. Let your breath guide your movement, and let your pelvis and your lower limbs respond to this rotation that you're doing. Last one. Hold it. Place your hands down. Separate your hands a little bit. Square your shoulders. And then once again, I invite you to close your eyes, soften your gaze. And pause and breathe. Allowing each inhale and each exhale to guide you a little bit deeper into this twist without forcing. When you're ready, opening your eyes and coming into that extension of the spine and then curling back and rounding the spine. And again, let your hands create this movement and allow the rest of your body to move naturally here. And for me, this is one of the best movements to be able to start working on what is called the spiral line of the body. How does it feel on the side? Gently come back to the center. Hold it, moving your left hand to the middle of the mat, pick up your right hand, take a little bit of a peek underneath and coming all the way up. So bringing your legs just in front of you again, feet on the ground so you're fully supported and then just let yourself curl over. And observing the two sides of your body. Noticing how you feel. Blinking your eyes open, coming all the way upright, and now come onto all fours. So set up your wrists, set up your knees, nice long spine. Start curling your spine into that cat stretch and then start lengthening and then coming into a bit of an extension of your spine. So again, notice after we did that mermaid right now that this is probably going to feel really, really easy for you because we have moved in all these different directions of the spine. Taking two more. Taking one more. And now just come back to neutral and hold it here. Tuck your toes under before we do the hovering of the knees. We're just going to move hips back a little bit just to give it a little bit of a stretch around the knuckles of the toes. And then we're going to come forward again. And again, a little bit of a shift back. And forward. Last two. Last one. And release. 
Now stay here, pressing into the hands, pressing into the toes, and see if you can lift your knees just up off the ground. So this is one of the best overall stabilizing exercises for our bodies, the four-point hover. We're loading all the joints of the body. We're asking ourselves to stabilize, working against gravity, and I sincerely hope you're all breathing. And on your next breath, let your knees come down, relax your feet out, open your knees nice and wide, and then big toes together as you settle back and bring your head all the way down towards the ground. Now listen, if your head isn't touching the floor, then today, please put a little bit of a prop underneath your head, because what I would like you to do is just start to walk your fingertips forward, and if you can, walk far enough ahead that you can actually straighten your arms and lift your elbows off the ground. If that's putting strain on your neck, then rather just keep the, hand, uh, the elbows down. Spread your fingers out nice and wide. And then see if you can push onto the fingertips and lift the wrists and the hands off the ground. So in this position, you're getting a really beautiful opening all the way along that arm line right here. Make sure that you can still breathe. So remember our general rule, guys, that if you can't breathe, then we've probably just gone a little bit too far into it. And then release your hands down. Draw yourself up again onto all fours and then place wrists, place knees. Once again, tuck your toes under. So we're going to be doing a little transition into a downward facing dog. Start pressing into hands and feet and just hover the knees. Stay here. Start to move your pelvis back. Lift your hips halfway up. So you see that my knees are really, really bent still. Relax the back of your neck and bring your awareness to really stretching the arms like we did a second ago and lengthening all the way up through the sacrum. And now start to pedal your heels one at a time towards the ground. So you're getting that release up the back of the leg, through the calf muscle, and then send both heels towards the ground. Now, maybe your legs are straight, maybe they're not. Absolutely fine wherever you are, as long as you can really keep that length of the spine. Take a little breath in. And on your exhale, soften your knees and walk your feet halfway forward, halfway. And then walk your fingertips back just in front of your toes, soften your knees, and then just consciously and deliberately relax the back of your neck. Shake your head, no, 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 no. Nod your head, yes, 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 yes. Now bend your knees slightly and walk your hands onto the front of your ankles. Lengthen your spine into a little bit of a tabletop so your back muscles are engaging, and I want you to see if you can connect your abdominals. Keep that tabletop position and walk your hands up to your knees. So you still have that lengthening of the spine. Abdominals are still connected. Now, walk your hands higher up your legs so you can bring yourself upright with a lengthened spine. I'm just gonna move a little bit away so I'm still in the camera. And lifting all the way up and tall. Let your arms relax. Roll your shoulders all the way around. And then just let them settle. So now we're gonna finish off in a standing position Remember your little prop. I want you to put the prop between your ankles. Now, I've come off the mat, so I'm in the camera, but it also makes it easier for balance. 
So maybe you want to come off the mat. If you want to challenge yourself, you can stay on the mat. And then you might want to have access to a wall or a chair just to help you with your balance if you need. So the prop is between your ankles. You can place your hands onto the shelf of the hip or just keep them down. I want you to come a fraction forward towards the balls of the feet, but don't lift your heels yet. I want you to feel a zipping sensation through your core and then float your heels a millimeter off the ground. So you haven't lifted the heels, you've literally just floated them up. And what I'm hoping you're connecting to is the base of the pelvis. It's going to wake up the back line of the body. So hamstrings up to the gluteals. And now start to lift your heels as high as you can. And the trick here is to not let the prop drop out. And then we reverse it. So when you come down, you don't just drop the heels. We come to that hover position. And then lower the heels and bring your body weight backwards. So I'm going to turn sideways so you can see what I'm doing as well. So from here, core connection, we shift weight forward, but we haven't lifted heels yet. Then we float the heels and we stay there. So hopefully we're activating all the way up to the base of the pelvis. And then we start to rise onto the balls of the feet. So now you're really working into the calf muscles. And then we lower the heels without letting them touch yet. We hover, 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 hover. And then we bring body weight back and center. Let's do one more time. Come forward, the heels are down. Hover the heels, wake up the back of the leg. Rising onto the balls of the feet. So now with the ankles in that stable neutral position, hopefully we can feel the connection all the way up to the inner thigh and pelvic floor as well. And then we lower, but we're not resting, we're hovering. Wakey, wakey gluteals. And then lower the heels and bringing your body weight back. Bend your knees and let's just do a few little bounces there. And then, you can release, move this just out to the side, standing with your big toes just in line with each other. Take a moment here to soften your gaze or close your eyes. Slowing down your breath, slowing down your mind taking the opportunity to feel and connect. If you could describe your physical body in one word, what would it be? Take a deep inhale through your nose. Hold your breath. Feel the energy. Feel the fresh air. Long exhale through your mouth. And blink your eyes open. Well done, guys. Let me check in with everyone, see how you're doing.